Hey and welcome to another Revit video. In this Revit video, we're covering the new features for Dynamo, Dynamo 2.3. Very exciting. Not a lot of new features, but a few good ones that you should be aware about, and I'm here to bring them to you. First, the biggest thing is you can now use Booleans with surfaces. Before you had to use solids, to create solids and then Boolean from there. So now there's a couple new Boolean nodes. We're gonna show that in a script here in just a second. I've also got some different ways you can manipulate connectors between nodes. That's very simple, but again, we'll show that as well. We've got new extensions built into all the scripts saved in Dynamo 2.3 and later. And all of those scripts will show all of the different kinds of extensions and packages that you have built into that script. Very helpful, very helpful moving forward if you're opening a script and just happen seen it before you can know what packages are built into it and finally a simple update to notes in Dynamo we'll cover all of those so right now what I have here is a simple script that will ultimately display how the new surface boolean nodes work but as we go as I build this I'll show you how the different connectors um, the new features with connectors work so so I've got a basic code block here with 0 and 1 and point by coordinates and maybe I want to do 0 for X and Z and then 1 for Y or how about 1 for X instead so I've got 0 for Y and Z and 1 for X and maybe I want to change Y and Z to 1 as well well you before you can uh, you can unplug these and then plug in 1 like just like that that's not a problem that's nothing new but Maybe we want, we want to do that in one swoop. We want to quickly take these two connectors that are built into the zero, connected to zero, and plug them into one. So what I can do is, I wish there's a better way to show this, but I'm going to press shift before I click on this end of the connector, and then I'll actually be able to take both of those with me. So I'll hold shift, I will click that, and now you can see, now that I have both of these selected, and I'm got both of these connectors, the start point of these connectors, I can plug them into the one just like that. Very quick and easy. So now I can plug all of these and take them to zero if I want. It's a very quick way of moving these different connectors around. And I can get kind of crazy with this too if I wanted to. So I can unplug from zero and put into two and you can see how real quickly I can do this and take all the nodes plugged into one output and move them somewhere else very quickly. So I just that's all I need right now and we'll leave it at that moving forward right there and so then I've got a basic point and I'll plug it into the origin of a plane and I'll use that plane to create a circle and define that circle the, the centroid of the circle and I'll use that circle to create a polygon with five sides that I've defined right there. And you can see I've got a pentagon that shows up there. And I'm going to do the same thing down below, but by default, the circle tool, or the circle node rather, is it has a plane and the radius is one, and the plane is just default to the origin, which is right there. So if I plug that in, you can see I have an eight-sided polygon, so I've got my octagon. So what I'm going to do as we start to go along is turn the previews off so we don't see these. We can only see our polygons there. I also don't need to see this plane or this point just for this tutorial. And so now we're getting to the surface. So I need to create a surface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna patch these surfaces and using a closed curve, I can create a surface from both of those. Again, I don't need to see these polygons anymore so now I've got these two surfaces down here really nice really quick and easy so now the other connector update so one the last connector update was dealing with changing from the output and so now I maybe I want to take multiple inputs and take this same surface and put it in different places so what I do if I want to add this to the list I can of course click and I've added that surface to the first list item but maybe I want to just for this example 
add this surface to all these different list items all at once without having to go click, 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 click. And the way I can quickly do that now is imagine these items are different nodes throughout the project or throughout the script that I want to place this surface there. So instead of just going click, click like before, I can, before I click this output here, I can hold control. And so now, unfortunately, there's no icon to say that I'm still holding control, but I'm holding control and I can click one. And now I actually still have that, I'm still holding control. I still have the option to place that output of surface anywhere I want and I can go I can go nuts I can place it in many different places just like that all at once it's really quick and really easy so that's the other update to connectors so I'll get rid of these we don't need them and so now I've got these two surfaces surface one two and they're overlapping which is where the boolean will come into play booleans are they're gonna take from another add to add together whatever it might be um, in this case the new Boolean nodes are surface and by union, and so you can find this in geometry surfaces surface. And then down here you'll see by union. So this is a, to create a surface by union, or you can affect or change a current surface through difference, and it's just taking one from another basically. And I'll show that in just a second. So what I want to do now is for these the by union, I want to add them together. So basically they become one surface. I take these two surfaces and they become one. So what I can do now is unfortunately, and I, I wish this were the case, this works really well in Grasshopper. You can you basically bypass having to create a list of multiple items to get to plug into one input because I can't, I still can't take this second input and place it there. All it will do is replace it and there's nothing I can do which is really a shame. So unfortunately, we're still stuck with having to take this, in this case, this surface and that surface, plugging them into a list and creating one list that contains both surfaces. So now if I hide these two surfaces, I will see now I have both of these surfaces built into this list item there. Now, they look like they're joined together as one service, but obviously they're not because we can see I have two services there in my list. And so, all I need to do now is drag this list into the surface there by Boolean. I'm going to not pre I'm going to turn the preview off for the list, and now I can see I have one solid joint surface, and to prove that, I have one surface. So, that works perfectly. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the preview off on this. Turn the preview back on for these single surfaces. And surface difference, and on the other hand, if you imagine by union is plus, or adding, or combining together, the, the difference in this case will be taking one away from the other, or a minus, or however you want to look at it. So the way that you can know what surface is going to be taken from the other is the surface the, the first surface, the surface that goes into the actual surface input, will be the one that you keep. It'll be the first one. It'll be the larger number if you're subtracting. It will be the, the final result. And the second surface, or anything else that you plug into this others, which in this case it's asking for a surface, will be used to subtract. So the first surface here is the pentagon. The second surface there is the octagon. And so the result we're expecting is that any overlap of the octagon over the pentagon will be subtracted away from the pentagon and will still have the result as the pentagon because that surface is what is in my surface input there. And so as soon as I put, take this surface and I place it in others, I'm gonna hide both of these nodes and we can see the result is a surface that is very quickly reduced by that octagon. And I can also very quickly switch these around. I'll of course I get an error if I'm trying to cut the same thing, but when I do that, I now the octagon is being cut by the pentagon, the second service by the first, just vice versa, it's all the same. So again, that was the Boolean, the new Boolean nodes built into Dynamo. Very helpful if you're using surfaces and Booleans, of course. You no longer have to use solids before you had if I search boolean here, 
now you can see the by boolean there surfaces by boolean but before we were stuck with having to use solid which is just a pain and i wouldn't have recommended it and it was very slow and all that it's just kind of a mess so those are the new boolean features i will save that just for the heck of it and what i'll show now is i'm actually going to open a different script and it's just a random script you don't need to pay attention to what's in here it's a crazy mess but what we can see is that I've got a lot of nodes obviously but I've used multiple packages and I'll get down to the packages I have here you can see I've got a number of packages installed and I actually made the script on a different PC that didn't necessarily have all of these so I, all I did was pull this script from a different PC and I'm, I did that because the new feature with the Dynamo scripts now displaying what packages are used is going to be just imperative to use whenever you're having to deal with a different script that either someone else built or is on a different PC or you know, whatever it might be you want to know how it was built and a good way to know is to see what packages were used because you're going to have to ultimately download those or somehow integrate those or change them out for ones you have or something so it's good to know and also note that the only way you can use this feature is if you have saved the dynamo script in version 2.3 basically that's all that information is populated within the dynamo script after you save it in a 2.3 version of dynamo so I've got the script here, it's crazy, I'm not even going to show you because I don't need to, but over here at the right you'll see there's an extension with an arrow, and as soon as I click that, you can see that I've got package names, and these are all the package names, the names of all the packages that are used in this script to create it. Really nice, really helpful, and I'm going to hide myself right here just to give you an example, to show you what you're missing over here, which is not much. This feature is in preview. You're going to start seeing this now more in Dynamo as they add new features. And to me, it's kind of unnecessary. But this is basically them covering themselves, saying, hey, this is a work in progress. If it breaks, we're sorry, but we told you. Uh, anyways, that's not a huge deal. But the, the nice part about this extension now is that you can see all the package names and the version, and you can keep track of that. You can, you can use this as you pull in different scripts. So again, really nice. Now, one thing I am afraid of is that it appears as though all of these packages also fall into packages that I have. And something I'm afraid of is that it will only be pulling from the packages I have, but not packages I don't have. So if I didn't have any packages and I pulled this in, it wouldn't display anything and I, I'm worried that that might be the case because I can tell that that might be the case because I have a node here that I know does not fall into any of the packages I have and I don't see where that node would fall in the package so just be aware of that it might not show you packages that you do not have on your PC which that's too bad but in any case it is really good to know what packages are being used in that script I can also, for this example, let's say I, I'm going to take a node from a package that does not fall in this package name, any of these packages here. And let's go to maybe Springs, I'll go to Display, or go to Revit. And I'll just drag in a random node here, maybe an error report right there. And now I'm going to save it. I'll save this, and I'm going to close it, and then I'm going to open it again, and we're going to see if we now see that new package showing up in the extensions. So that package was called Springs, and I currently do not see Springs, which is too bad. That might be something else that you need to be aware of. Um, you can find this new extension if you go to View and Show Graph Package Dependency. 
and that you'll then you'll see the extensions there. You could click it out. Um, again, that's something to be aware of. If if I'm adding, if I've now added a node that falls into one of the packages that I currently do not see over here, to me it seems like I should either immediately see it or open it, or, or having actually saved and then reopened the file, then I should see it. So again, something to be aware of, but it is a nice new feature with Dynamo. And then finally, I will show a, I'll open up a, not a note block, but a note. You can do that by going to edit, create note, or hitting control W. And there's my new note here. And I can double click this and edit it just like before. I'm actually going to paste in some information. And what this is going to say is how, oh, yeah, you know, new information with Dynamo 2.3 and Revit. And, you know, the nice part about this update is I can now expand this window, this note block window. Not a big deal, but before, if you remember with notes, I was stuck like reading one single row at a time and then scrolling left and right instead of up and down. It's just, it was kind of a mess. So now I can expand this and I can write it out just like normal text, whatever I want to do, hit accept, and I have my note right here. It, it's very easy, very simple, yet very helpful update with notes. Now you're always going to get it showing up like this. I wish it would expand fully to show all the text, but hey, that's okay. At least I can expand it to see all the text that I need to and edit it much easier. So those were the updates with Dynamo 2.3. If you enjoyed this video, please demolish that like button. It helps. And also please subscribe. That also helps. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you come back for more. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.